Alright, we have our first signing of the offseason. We are here on June 3rd, and we have signed Marco Carraro, a 27-year-old center back. And uh, we will accept that. Uh, it will be an end-of-contract deal, so he is coming on a free, uh, signing a contract for $654,000 a year. Let's take a look at him. He comes to us from Ven Venezia in Italy. Uh, playing Serie B last year, Serie A, the f previous couple of years, uh, looks like they got relegated. They bought him for $1.3 million. Uh, looks like they bought him from, um, was that uh, Atalanta, possibly? That doesn't say loan, but it doesn't say they bought him either. Not sure. Anyway, let's take a look at him real quick. He is 27 years old. He's not capped uh, for Italy. He can play with either foot, which is one of the things I liked about him. He can play defensive mid. He can play central mid. Not the paciest player, and I did note that. However, he's got a little burst of acceleration, and he's got really good passing and first touch. This allows us to transition into more of a ball-playing defender. And if we take a look at him at center back, Bilotti's definitely going to be the starter. Fosu Mensa can play a lot of positions, but he's more than likely going to be out on the right side. So, and Wharton's over on the left. So that puts uh, McGinley and Carrar Carraro in competition with each other. So that's, that's basically what's going to happen. First touch is key to being a technical player, natural in a couple of positions. So, you know, good in the air as well. So I really liked uh, his heading is there, passing, tackling, marking is solid. Uh, if we want to look at his ball playing defender skills, uh, there you go with his highlighted. So pace is really the only thing, but he's really well-rounded, and I think he gives us a little bit more of a veteran presence for our final season. So there is the first signing in the books. We've made a bunch of inquiries. I really wanted to try to sign Ben White from uh, Brighton, but they wanted $54 million for him. So... I passed, and there's a couple of people that I've been looking at here in the early going, but they're all so expensive, and I just don't want to blow all my transfer budget on one or two players. So uh, we'll see what transpires moving forward. And we have picked up our second official signing of the offseason. Remember, we did bring in those four younger players, well, the one midfielder, Coffee, and then three younger players for the youth ranks. We'll probably never see them. But this is our second official signing of the offseason. Uh, it's Darko Chirlinov, a 24-year-old winger. And uh, three-star current, four-star, uh, three-and-a-half-star potential. We get a C-plus grade on him. And he signs a three-year contract worth two, just over $2.5 million a year. And he costs us a fee of $7 million. If we take a look at him... Uh, he comes to us from Freiburg, uh, who signed him for $5.5 million a couple of years ago. He was out on loan at FC Cone uh, last year, played seven matches. And if we take a look deeper at him, he is a multi-positional player, likes to run with the ball through the center, attempts overhead kick, so he's got a little flair, uh, cuts inside from both wings, and likes to beat man repeatedly. So I guess he beats the man, then holds up, lets him get position, and then beats him again. He is North Macedonian, so he reminds me of Jani Alioski with some of those. Uh, uh, that must be a Macedonian thing with all, uh, you know, likes to beat his man repeatedly. But uh, very flexible. He can play a lot of positions. He's even starting to train uh, the wing backs in defensive mid position. So probably most natural as an attacking left winger. Of course, we're playing with a central a central line, so he would be on that left wing there. We can take a look at winger on attack. So there's his ratings. Dribbling, uh, passing. Uh, we actually are pretty bad at dribbling the ball. So this might be interesting. If we take a look at him here, uh, current international, re resolute characteristics, ability to dribble, make him a difficult opponent. 
fair amount of speed, can play multiple positions, and is a creative player. Uh, he has potential to be a decent Premier League left winger, a leading player for most championship sides, so he's probably right in line with most of our guys. If we look at him up top, he's going to be down the pecking order for striker. Uh, he will be, we're looking to maybe get rid of McGinnis, so I was viewing him as being like now third option on the right wing and third option on the left wing behind Mitchell and Rogerio, and he could even do a job probably in the central mid if we need him. So he's going to be a good guy to, to have on the bench that can fill quite a lot of duties. So yeah, there we go. Let's kind of take a look here again. So still, still third. And he's right there with McGinnis. So there's our newest signing. Uh, won't see a lot of him, but he will be on the bench. So we have a international on the bench now. We'll be back with any new signings as they come up. So we have some outgoing news. Kyle McGinnis, we have sold for $975,000. Uh, he goes to Hibs, and we signed him on a free. So we make almost a million dollars on him. Uh, he started 14 matches, came off the bench in nine, played well. I mean, he didn't he didn't disappoint, but last year in the Premier League, he only made two relief appearances, so definitely expendable. We'll add 700000 to our transfer budget. Just a quick heads up, we have gotten a job interview from West Ham. We are going to decline it, but just wanted to give some comparison so their four star reputation valued at 1.2 billion and we're three star valued at 681 million although we've come a long way <laughs> so anyway just wanted to uh to show that to you yeah we knew this one wasn't gonna happen right just on principle can't do it can't that's one club i will never ever manage in football manager sorry i'm not sure how wolves has taken a bigger jump in the last year than we have i mean we've made it to the premier league from where we started and we only grew a little that's crazy the other thing was of course we we, we did not even interview for the man U job uh 1.67 billion with a b in sponsorship by contrast, the lowest earners was Forrest Green, $17.75 million. And the average for all Premier League clubs was $84 million. So we're, what, $67 million below the, the mean? That's crazy. Crazy. We brought in another new signing. Not a great player, but uh, I liked him. He's a 24-year-old winger, Luan Gabriel. And he's an emergency backup. He signs for a three-year deal. Has uh, some room to improve. C-minus for the fans, but he is Brazilian. So they're disappointed, but we'll give him a chance. Keen to see if he can handle a new country. Not even sure if we're going to be able to play him because I'm not sure what the rules are for South Americans. But if we take a look at him, uh, he comes from Vitoria. We only paid 35000 for him. Uh, he's 24 years old. He might be the only Brazilian in the country that's uncapped. Three and a half star potential. He is left footed, so I project him playing on the left side. Depth at the wing position, uh, especially with McGinnis going out. He does have pace and acceleration. In fact, let's look at his actual actual ratings that we would want out there. So he's got really good acceleration and pace. He's got off-the-ball flair, anticipation. I mean, everything's there. Crossing is actually an upgrade over Marcos Rosario, uh, but not over Mitchell. Uh, passing, he can pass decently well, and he can dribble well. So I think he can do a job. He can certainly be cover for us in that position. We do have another outgoing here. 20-year-old goalkeeper Rob Clark. Uh, goes off for $325,000 to Bournemouth. 
Uh, let's see, Bournemouth, if I remember correctly, they are the Premier League side, so they got us on a cheap there. I'm, I'm a little pissed off about that, but that was his value. We had gotten three other offers from uh, championship side teams, so I knew I wasn't going to get a lot more, and being the last year, I wasn't looking to milk every penny, uh, but we get 200000 added to our budget. Just, you know, disappointed it didn't work out. You weren't my first team plans. There you go. All right. So I didn't have anything negative for him. I thought he might be a good player for us, but we are too deep at goal. So nothing, nothing really to complain about there. Just moving some dead weight that just honestly isn't going to see much playing time. We've got another signing we've just brought in, Marco Carraro. I think we already talked about him uh, earlier, maybe not. But uh, he is a C rating for us, two and a half star current ability. We've already done the registration and everything. So let's take a look at him. He is a uh, Italian player. We did talk about him, yeah? Venezia had bought him from Inter Milan and for 1.3. We pick him up on a free. Taking a look at him, he is a central mid, six foot two. And there's a ball playing defender. I can see him being a, eh, I don't know, probably back up, probably back up. Now you have to remember, Wharton's in another position. Fosu Mince is in another position. So he's going to be cover. He can play central mid as well way down the pecking order. So not a huge signing for us. Oscar's end of contract, so his time with us finally comes to an end. Uh, we do have a couple of young players that are in the last year we were trying to sell. Nobody's interested. I don't think he's going to feature for us this year. He's not. So we can go ahead and let him go out on loan. They'll pick up his entire salary. And here is another signing, Matty Cash. Uh, we sign him for a fee of $2 million, plus some other, you know, agent fees and stuff comes up to 2.3. And he signs a four-year deal, $1.63 million per year, 27 years old. He had asked to be transferred after uh, they were relegated. So they they went down back down to the championship. And so he wanted to get back up to the Premier League. Didn't play much for him last year. Only three reserve appearances. I guess that was a mid-season transfer. Um, hmm. So 5.75 is what they paid. So we get him on a discount. And if we take a look at him, he uh, I think he's going to be our starting right back. Maybe. It's either going to be him or Fosu Mensa. If Cash doesn't start, he probably replaces Ayembe. And that gives us three deep there. Let's see if there's any interest in him. Just to drum some up. Uh, currently operating on a good Skybet championship level. Three-star current, three-and-a-half star potential. So if he doesn't start for us, he'll, he'll be uh, first deputy on both right flank positions. He could play central mid and on the left side as well. Requested to leave, natural in a couple of positions, fairly determined, and uh, ability to dribble. So that's one, you know, one of the things I noted in the offseason is we were a very poor dribbling team. So he's got good physicals. Uh, if we look at him at right back as a complete wing back on support, there you go. So he can cross, first touch, passing. He's very well rounded. So Thought he was a good get for us. And just a real quick update here, even with the signings that we've made, and we'll do a recap, of course, uh, 18.3 million out, 17.1 in, and a lot of older players. Jack Clark, I do like Jack. I really wish he would have done, uh, done a little bit better. I mean, he's still young, but let's offer trials for all of them. I don't know if they'll take them. Uh, Tottenham, of course, paid, yeah, it was about $12 million to, uh, no, it wasn't that much. Was it $11 million? Maybe there were some add-on fees that I don't know about, but it was around $11 million real life when they bought him from Leeds. 
Uh, let's see. Played a bunch of matches for QPR. Stoke. He just never, never really got a chance with Tottenham. Six reserve appearances. Nine reserve appearances. Only three appearances last year for Spal. Interesting. I mean, he doesn't look horrible. Again, he can cross the ball. Very pacey. Dribbling's really good. I, I might sign him just, just to have him because I, I like him. But, uh, all right, well, let's see what happens with these guys as we go forward. Oh, well, Clark is going to come on loan. Good. And here is an outgoing uh, David Vieira. We move him on for $1.8 million. Could go up to 2.1, and he's heading to Luton Town. So, uh, you know, he was just too far down the pecking order. I couldn't get him the playing time he wanted. Six starts, 13 reserve appearances, but we've got some new central mids coming in, and I think that was just going to put him off. So, yeah. He is gone, and that brings us in a little more money. Uh, he has been a good servant, and he's happy with me, so that's good. We part on good terms. All right, well, let me uh, see what else happens. We're heading into the friendlies as well. Uh, I don't think we're expecting any more big signings, are we? Well, I do. I mean, I have contract offers out on quite a few, on five players. So let's see if any of those come through during the friendly period, because uh, some of these are pretty big signings. So um, anyway, we'll talk to you guys in a second. All right, we have wrapped up the transfer window, most of it at least. I'm not expecting any more signings, but you know with me, you just never know. Uh, wanted to take a quick look at the friendlies. Uh, just let you check out the scores. Six clean sheets out of eight. Some dominant performances in there. Really didn't play any huge clubs uh, with the exception of Athletic Bilbao. Uh, and we beat them 5-0. I mean, they're in La Liga, right? <laughs> I mean, hello. So that could bode well. They might not have played anybody. I don't know. You know me. I'm not big on, I don't, you know, if I haven't managed them as football manager and they don't play for leads, I pretty much won't know who they are unless I've, you know, unless they're an international, you know, the Ronaldos, the Messis, no, the, Harry Kane. I know those guys. Um, here's one for you. I had never heard of Sonny until I saw the Tottenham documentary on uh, Amazon Prime. Because I'd never watched the Tottenham game. But uh, anyway, uh, I like him. He's a good player. like him now, but he doesn't play for Leeds, so I don't follow him. Uh, anyway, let's jump into the transfers. It's been a busy season. Uh, let's look at finances first. Uh, so we have expenditures of $7.1 million this month. 500000 in income. We're only three days in. You can see we've uh, tailed off from uh, $86 million down to $69 million, and we've lost $12 million this season. That's, that's transfer spending. So give you an idea of what we have spent. And let's jump into it. So real quick at a glance, $15.75 million in outgoing uh, outgoing players, so incoming money for us, and forty two and a half million spent, so about twenty million below what our transfer budget was. Uh, all things considered, uh, it was sixteen apiece. Yes, uh, I wanted to come over to the transfer window. Uh, sixteen players in, sixteen players out. Highest fee was eight million dollars, and net was twenty seven point five outgoing we don't appear anywhere in the high spenders club so that's probably a good thing so let's start with our outgoing kyle mcginnis one of our reserve players uh mostly played on the right side uh dabbled in the central mid a little bit he goes off to hibbs for nine hundred seventy-five thousand. Uh, he did start a few games for us, mainly that last year in the championship. 14 starts, 9 reserve appearances, 5 goals that year. Played very well. 
Only two reserve appearances last year. Uh, 10 goals, 14 assists for our, our youth club as he was you know, trying to stay fit, but just wasn't in the plans anymore. So we shipped him off for a little bit of money. And you'll see we got him on a free, so we made almost a million dollars on him. Uh, Rob Clark, our reserve goalkeeper, goes off to Bournemouth for 325000 I already had accepted three other bids for the same amount from championship, three championship clubs. Bournemouth, a premier side, came in and offered the same. I, I would have rejected it just on principle, or I would have canceled it and re-offered him out at more money. But, it, you know, because it's our last season, I couldn't really be bothered. Um, we got him, of course, on a free when Man United released him from their youth system. And I had hopes for him, and he probably would continue to be our reserve keeper. But Gerard has done well. He showed a little progression in the offseason. So Clark basically became our number three keeper. So we shipped him out. Uh, Stephen Carroll, one of our youngsters out on loan. Oscar was an end of contract free. Uh, so he departs. He just couldn't make the squad last year. Never, never featured for us last year. And even that last year, we kind of outgrew him. We had signed him for 950000 so we do take a hit on him financially. But we got him at a really good bargain. It's Slavia Prague that took a beating. But, um, you know, we got our money's worth, I think, that first year. 17 starts, 10 relief appearances. He was more of a number 10, and at that time we were playing with the 4-4-1-1. And I just really couldn't get him into the mix. So he goes off to Zilm. David Vieira, uh, he goes off to Luton Town for a fee of $1.8 million. It can go up a little bit. Similar thing, he was more of a defensive mid. We played that la uh, two years ago. Last year we went to more of a flat mid four, and he just wasn't in the mix and wasn't very happy. Uh, we force started him a few games, but mostly off the bench. Didn't play horribly, but he was pretty far down the pecking order. We paid 425000 to get him from Braga, and we sell him on for a nice little profit. Robbie McKenzie, he was a, a young player that just never made it in. He goes off to Rotherham for $500,000. Uh, Sahin Berber, he was one of our youth intake players a couple of years ago. He goes off for 55000 Probably could have kept him. He wasn't making any money. He's still very young. I think he's 18, just but he wasn't good enough to make it. So I said, well, let's make a little bit of money on him. O'Dane Henry back out on loan. Mads Bistrup, uh, he played a role for us last year. We paid 475000 from Red Bull Leipzig. And uh, he did play. He started seven matches, four reserves, one goal, one assist. Played well, 7.23 rating, but we've got some central mids that we're bringing in, and so I wanted to sell him, but I, nobody bid on him, so he goes out on loan. They're picking up his salary, so that's fine. Uh, Daniel Potsma, he was, when I, we first started the save, I believe he was the first guy that we, we got and uh, always was hoping he, he might become our reserve keeper or starting keeper, but he was behind O'Malley, and then we got promoted all the way to the Premier League. So he's been on eternal loan. He's off to Blackpool this year. Jackie Moore's been on loan for several years. We finally move him on to Stoke for 375. Marcos Rogerio, we signed him last year. We paid three and a half million from Rio in Portugal. And we sell him on for seven and a half to Venezia over in Syria in Italy. He played a lot for us last year. He was his lack was crossing, and I think we got some upgrades on that left wing, and I upgraded left back, which means I can put Mitchell back on that left mid as well, which made him expendable. Ross Sykes goes out on loan. Alex Lowry was one of our young central mids. I, we, we played him a few times last year. I was thinking he might be in the mix for rotation this year. And uh, we I just signed too many central mids, I think. And so we cut bait with him. Uh, $1.1 million to Nottingham Forest. We got him on a free from Rangers 
when they released him, so nice little profit there. Alistair Murphy was one of our young up-and-comers. Uh, our striker, our team, uh, one of our team leaders, Collins, was not a happy camper. We got him for 1.2 from Rangers, so he didn't come through our youth system, but we signed him a couple of years ago. We make a million-dollar profit on him. Similar situation. He definitely could have been in the mix, but we got a couple of players that were just inches above him, and honestly, I needed to get some roster space with the 25-man cap uh, for roster spaces, so we move him on uh, for a good profit. <coughs> it can go up to 2.7 eventually. And Nathan McGinley, our team uh, team captain, uh, we loan him out to Shakhtar for 195000 a month. Um, we signed a couple of center backs. He was not going to play this year. And I was probably going to have to take the captaincy away from him anyway. So we tried to sell him. Told him it was in his best to continue playing first team football. He agreed. He wasn't disappointed. So off he goes. So taking a look at the incoming. So Barry Coffey. We might, you know, some of these guys we might have talked about earlier, but he was a signing from last year. We get him from Celtic on a free. We signed him uh, in the January window for end of contract. And uh, so we got him, and that's one of our central mids that we're looking at. He can play the deep line playmaker. He can play box to box, which are the two positions in the tactic that we're playing. Very good all-around player, can pass, can dribble. Uh, at least he can dribble a little bit. So that's a good signing, I think. Everybody else here, uh, Hassal, Kamango, Stirrup, those guys were freeze on uh, youth releases, and they'll be in our youth system, so they we won't even look at them. And then we get into the money. So our first signing of the offseason was Darko Chirlinov, and you'll notice we have a lot of knobs coming in. $7 million from Freiburg. They originally paid $5.5 million to get him from Stuttgart, and he's played a little bit. He played 19 starts the first year. And then he went out on loan to Köln, which was still in the Bundesliga last year. Didn't feature very much. Only seven appearances, most of those reserves. But he can play basically everything on the attacking half of the field. So he's going to be a good bench player for us. And he's well-rounded. I think he's a very big step up. He does have really good dribbling, which when I was looking at the club, dribbling we were considered one of the worst dribbling teams in the premier league so certainly needed to address that a little bit so very well-rounded bench player uh, luan gabriel we paid thirty-five thousand from vittoria and they uh came up in their system so we got him on a pretty good price uh, he is 24 years old he is brazilian but he has not made any caps for them uh, he will. He's not a. Yeah, he could play striker, so he'll be depth at striker, probably fourth or fifth option, and also options on both wings. He is a left footer, so I liked that, and that's one of the guys that came in and made uh, Marcos Rosario expendable. Three and a half star potential. Probably he may not play a lot, but he is there if we need him to do a job. Marcos Carraro comes in on a free. He's valued at $17 million. We get him from Venezia, and he is a 27-year-old Italian. I'm looking at him more as a ball-playing defender. Uh, really good first touch, solid passing, can play defense. Doesn't have the greatest pace, but he also gives us a veteran presence back there. So you can see he's played six matches, playing an 8.67, completing 85% of his passes with to assist. So liking what he brings to the table. Not sure if we'll see him as a starter or a reserve, but we'll find out. Uh, one of the few players that I actually recognized the name was Matty Cash. We get him for $2 million from Norwich, and uh, he's 27 years old. Norwich paid $5.75 for him just last year to get him from Nottingham Forest, and we get him at a discount because Forest got relegated. Of course they did. And uh, right back, 
right fullback, right right midfielder. I think he's going to probably fit in at the right back. He may be the number one, probably the deputy at that position. Very well-rounded, good dribbling, good crossing. He does have some injury concerns. Uh, that was one of the things in the scouting report. And it's not even showing up now, but uh, said that he, he, he was injury-prone and with his groin and he's had a couple of uh well i can't find it it was under reports before oh here we go injury history i guess it moves so uh six days for a groin six days for a groin but then you go back and it was three three years for so you know he misses a week here and there it may get worse but hopefully if we have him as a reserve that'll be less of an issue then we start uh then i started getting serious <laughs> uh patrick berg not as much money but 1.6 million from norwich again uh, he is a 27 year old norwegian central midfielder they got him on a free from uh, borussia dortmund we paid 1.6 for him and i think he is going to slot in very well one goal three assists in three matches for us in the friendlies again not the paciest but he does have a quick burst of acceleration technicals are all very good he can play that deep line playmaker very good passing as well work rates way up there so very excited for him thomas uwajan cost us eight million dollars from club bruges he is 28 years old and a Dutch player. They paid $7 million for him last year to get him from AS Roma. Roma paid 10 and three quarters for him to get him from uh, AZ Alkmaar. What is that? AZ Alkmaar in Holland. And uh, so, you know, he's, he's pulling up some money with quick changes. But three-star current, three-star potential, left back, left midfielder, central midfielder. I was looking to try to boost that left back position because with Mitchell probably moving back to central mid, all we had back there was Wharton, and I needed somebody else. Decent crosser. He's kind of right in there with Wharton, but very good passer of the ball. So pretty excited to get him. Tosin, Arda, Arda, I don't know, Thomas Arterabayo, five and a quarter million again as we raid Norwich uh, after their relegation. Very well-rounded player, three and a half star current, four star potential, great first touch, passing ability, true ball playing defender. Uh, they had paid twelve and a half million to get him from Fulham, so we got him on a discount. Uh, he had twelve starts in the Premier League last year, and the only concern I have is that he's going to be challenging Bilotti for starting time because they're both right-footed. Nahuel Nunez comes from River Plate. I think that's River Plate, but River. Seven and a quarter million dollars. And taking a look at him, 22-year-old Argentinian. He was out on loan at New York last year, but came up through the River system. And he is a striker, very pacey, burst of acceleration, passing, dribbling, first touch, just like him all around. He's going to be, he was going to be our number three option, probably looking at number, well, he's probably still number three. I think he's going to displace Collins at number for the number three, and there's a reason we'll see a little bit farther down the road. Probably didn't need this guy, but he was on loan. They gave us a pretty cut rate on his salary. I think we're only paying 60% of his salary. Pretty well-rounded player, 18-year-old Englishman, and uh, just, he's good. So we picked him up. He's our only lone player this year. Jack Clark. Now, those you, you, you guys know I'm a Leeds fan. Jack Clark was a player for Leeds. Was one of the young up-and-comers that you know we had high hopes for. And he, he collapsed on the field. Um, what was that, two years ago? 2018-19 season. He collapsed on the field, so three years ago. And um, pretty much didn't play the rest of the year. But he looked really good when he did play. 
Tottenham came in. I'm not sure that's an accurate price. I want to say they paid 11 million. There might have been some additions to the to the fee that you know I don't remember, but it was around 11 million. I'm pretty sure. And um, so he went to Tottenham, and to date he just hasn't done anything for him. I've heard Tottenham are really disappointed in him, but uh, we're pretty happy we got 11 million dollars for him for sure. But uh, we pick him up on a free from Tottenham. So that's good. And he can play both right and left wing. He is right footed, but uh, again, you can see pace, acceleration, first touch, technique, crossing, dribbling. He's got it all. We hope he can do the job. He's got uh, three assists in three matches, 7.73 rating so far in the friendlies. This was a late signing. So we're here at August 3rd. So Sirkin, we had a bid on. He didn't accept it until for several weeks. This guy popped up. My scouts pulled him out, and I went, ooh, I kind of like him. Bjorn Marinov from Borussia Dortmund, five and a quarter million, valued at 13, so we got good value. Four-star current, five-star potential, one goal in his one match with an eight rating. We went to South Africa for training camp this year, so a lot of these guys that signed later were not part of the training camp squad, so they couldn't play in a lot of the early friendlies. So he uh, he had to wait till we came back to England to get uh, his first start for us. Borussia Dortmund bought him for 4.3 from Borussia Gladbach. That's what we're going to say because I got no idea. Munchen Gladbach? Something like that. But anyway, we pay five and a quarter. He's he's young. He's 19 years old, 19-year-old German. I think we've got a pair of Germans up top now. Physicals are dominant. Jumping reaches through the roof if we had a roof on our stadium. Decision-making, determination, anticipation, drip. I mean, everything is there. Passing technique. Only thing he lacks a little bit is work rate, but still 10 is at least average, right? And uh, he looks to be the deal. So I'm thinking he is going to pair up uh, with Ids up top and give us a pair of German strikers, and that's going to push the our young Brazilian down the list, and Gabriel will be down the list as well. And Collins, of course, you know, he, he will probably continue to be our first option, but don't know how much he'll play. And then the last guy coming in was six and a quarter million, Dennis Circlin from Tottenham. Uh, he is another left back, three and a half star, four star potential. Uh, he came up through Tottenham's system, so we bought him, you know, from them. He's mostly been out on loan. Very, very good physicals. 20 determination. He, he's just a stud, and he might be the best player on our team all around. This is the guy I'm, I'm thinking is going to be our starter. If we take a look at our depth chart real quick, uh, we're hiding loans. So that gives us Ids and Marinov up top, Nunez, Collins, and Kamara uh, on the bench. Anybody beyond that we're not really worried about. Mitchell on the left, Cherlinov. Uwajan and Jack Clark on the right side, La Quintana, Ryan Fisher, Matty Cash, Jack Clark, and Marinov uh, can drop back if needed. Downs and Berg look to have the midfield. Fosu, uh, Mensil be in there. Morgan is in there. Albie Morgan, one of our young players. Ids can drop back if need be. And then we've got a bunch more players. Probably not going to see these – Two guys, we'll probably see more of Coffey, uh, Uwajan, and uh, probably Cherlinov, I would guess. Taking a look at uh, left back, we have Sirkin there. Uwajan can be his deputy. That drops Wharton to third choice. Uh, Fosu Mensa on the right, Cash is his deputy. Ayimbe, Ayimbe uh, will be third choice there. Uh, Bilotti and Tosin Adarabayo. Those appear to be our two starting backs now. That moves Pavlovich to the bench. Uh, Wharton will be on the bench across three positions. And we also have uh, Corbo 
and a couple of other guys. But we've got good depth there. I, I looked at a couple of keepers, but nobody really jumped out. And you have to remember, I typically go with only what my scouts bring me, so just didn't really have any leads on goalkeepers. We looked at two or three, but they weren't going to be any better than Nomov. So we're going to stick with Nomov, and Gerard showed a little bit uh, of improvement, so he's going to go in as the deputy. And when I was actually picking in the... Um, you know, in the matches, they were actually, you know, that my assistant was actually going with Gerard. So pretty well-rounded, honestly, pretty well-rounded. I don't see much at all separating them. I'd probably go with Nomov just on communication. First touch is equal. Gerard does have slightly better passing. I don't know. It's, it's kind of, Kind of split there. I do like the composure, though. Decision-making. 12 isn't bad, though, so I can live with that. Positioning. you got to like his agility. And the fact he's only 18. Probably what I would do, especially if I was going to be playing longer, Nomov would probably be my starter for probably two more years. And then about 20, I think he would be more fully developed. And we bring him in as our number one. If, if I had to. So uh, that is what we're looking at for transfers. Let me know in the comments how you think we did. Again, we didn't spend all of our money. I did have to adjust the payroll because I did go through. So we had to take some of our transfer budget to, uh, to suck that up, but that's okay. We also had a lot of games that had to get rescheduled uh, because uh, Bristol City was playing on the same day in the stadium and of course it's their home stadium so we're gonna have to condense some of our fixtures so uh, next episode tomorrow will be Chelsea and West Brom to kick off the season so I hope to see you guys for that and don't forget this will be the last season come hell or high water uh, as this will go up at some point I don't have the dates I haven't laid them out uh, but um, you know, I'm recording this on the 21st of October, so we probably have about a week, week and a half of episodes for this season, and then we'll just kind of take, take a few days or a week off uh, waiting for the beta for FM21 to come out. So guys, hope you're in there for the long haul. Stick with me this season, and uh, hopefully we can stay up. One last thing to show you, though, uh, was the season preview. Uh, they are expecting us to get relegated, or at least to be in the mix for relegation with Southampton, West Brom, Crystal Palace, and Swansea. Uh, Wolves just got promoted back up, and they're expected to do well. But uh, hopefully, I'm not expecting a 7th or 8th place finish. Again, the only goal is to avoid relegation, so... I think as long as if we can shoot for somewhere, I think somewhere between 10th and 13th would probably be a, a good season for us. Uh, the top half of the bottom half of the table. That's how we'll sell that. Yes, it's the bottom half, but it's the top half of the bottom half. All right, guys, hit that like button, subscribe, hit that bell. That way, when the season does end, you start getting the notifications when I jump into FM21. And uh, no streaming to tell you about, no Patreon to tell you about. No, nope, just hit the like button and subscribe, and uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.